couch Dogs need the lesson Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome back to yet another awesome lesson right here on Lickin' Riff in which we'll continue discussing musical storytelling. And in this video, I'd like to discuss with you the importance of really internalizing and understanding that music is a language. Music tells a story, okay? First and foremost, music is there to express something. Okay, it's there to express beauty, it's there to express disgust, it's there to express anger, it's there to express um, chilling out. It's there to express um, anything that you'd like it to express. And just like language, just like I'm talking right now, I'm using building blocks, I'm using letters, I'm using vowels, I'm using sounds, I'm using a certain rhythm in my playing. Okay, I stop between words. Sometimes I talk and then I stop. Okay, it's the same with music. It's exactly the same, but with, without words. Okay? You create sentences. You create sentences, short sentences, longer sentences, longer sentences. You can create paragraphs. Okay? You can create blocks, just like you see a block of text on a page. A chord can be considered a block of text. Okay, I'm improvising right now as I'm talking to you. I, I haven't prepared a script. I'm using words I already know in order to create new sentences. So that's what you do with music. You create, you create new music using using the notes, using the chords, using the shapes, using the ideas that you already know. If you know one idea, you can change it a little bit, you can change the phrasing, and you can create a new sentence. Okay, that's musical storytelling. And when you want to tell the story, you need it to lead somewhere. Okay? If you do B minor, A, and G, that's one, uh, that's one story. If you do G, A, B minor, it's a completely different story. If you add F sharp minor, suddenly you add a bit of atmosphere. And then the next chord leads the story. Okay, you can take the F sharp minor to G, you can take it back to F, uh, you can take it back to B minor. hopeful. It's ambivalent. You're not sure if it's hopeful or somber. E minor. Suddenly you have a new color. You have a new, you have a new character. Okay? You can think about it like that. Now, the, the musical language is, uh, is a language of, ex uh, of abstraction. Okay, and you have to hone your abstraction because you don't, uh, you, you don't always have to use full uh, chords. You can, do, you can do one note. Mm. Okay, Titanic. Okay, and I'm playing the A bass and I'm just playing on the D string. Um, 11. Nine and seven. Um, I had played nine and eleven on the G string as well. Okay, and then you can go to uh, you can go to five. Suddenly you change it. Suddenly there's drama. Then the drama resolves, or you can continue. Okay, uh, you can go chromatically. Hey, okay, I did seven, six, five, uh, four on the D string, all while playing the A string. It can be hopeful. Or it 
can be dark. I don't want to do anything that I already know how to do. I don't want to play a melody that I already know. I want to experiment. And then I decide which story I want to tell. I decide where I want to take the story. Okay, that's why I'm always trying to go outside my comfort zone. Right? And I try to find new expressions. And I'm just talking about moving my fingers on one or two strings. I'm not doing anything overly complicated. I can go complicated. I can try new uh, finger positions, new chords that I've never tried before. Um, this, is, this is the chord that I know. So let's, let's manipulate it. Let's distort the chord by moving one finger. And this is an interesting chord. Now I'll try just moving one finger at each time and and then we'll see where the story takes me you see just leading the notes I have no idea what I've just done I just moved one note around I just tinkered around with it okay and as long as I kept good rhythm the story kind of told itself okay? and it, it, it doesn't really matter. L let me show you. Can, you can do complete nonsense. Um, let's, let's play bass a little bit. You see, I'm just toying around with the rhythm here. I'm playing random notes on the sixth string, just random notes. And I was being playful. And that created one sort of story. So, so think about the components as the words you're talking, the, the words you're speaking, the words you're expressing, you're using to express yourself. Um, because, because it's the same thing, just without the meaning that goes along with the words. Okay? The notes are the letters. Um, the chords are, are kind of like um, um, cliches, just like using... The expression, oh, my heart broke. That's a cliche. So B minor can be my heart broke. And A could be the sun will shine tomorrow. Okay, so, so just, just think about the story that you want to tell. Think about where you want to take the story. It doesn't have to be complicated. Just play E minor with the E, uh, with the e scale on the, the E string. Just play strings 1, 2, 3, and 6. This is my go-to example all the time with 12, 10, 8, 7, 5, 2, uh, 3, and 0. And just play around. Then just change the notes. Instead of 7, play 6 instead of two play one. And you see, if you have good rhythm, it doesn't really matter that you changed the scale, that you changed it, that you distorted it a little bit. It becomes interesting because you change the story, but you can, you can keep it, in, you could keep it in the minor or major scale. I'm, I'm just showing you that you can take the story, the musical story anywhere you want. Okay? You control the story. So that's the, that's the second installment of the musical storytelling uh, series here on Lick and Riff. Um, so I'll see you the next one or any other lesson. So subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you the next time. Bye for now. Enjoy.